Welcome to the Kahoma Community College Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning podcast. I am your host, Dr. Oweda McAfee, and today's guest is Dr. Patrice Wilson, who will discuss with us institutional operations and integrity practices. Welcome, Dr. Wilson. Hello, hello. Um, again, I'm Dr. Patrice Wilson. I'm an Associate Vice Chancellor um, at South University, and I'm so excited to be joining you today. Thank you for inviting, inviting me, Dr. McAfee. Oh, yes, we're excited to have you, and I'm going to tell the listeners a little bit more about you. Dr. Patrice Wilson, um, a contributory leader, finds passion and purpose in influencing positive changes that improve students' ability to thrive academically, professionally, civically, culturally, and socially. Dr. Wilson holds a Bachelor of Art in English with a concentration in communication from the University of Maryland, a Master's of Education in Workforce Development from the University of Arkansas with a con uh, concentration in, in andragogy, and EDD in Higher Education Leadership with a concentration in adult learning from Walden University. In her 22 years of higher education experience, she has served in leadership positions at both two-year and four-year colleges, adult education and training programs, and national service learning programs. Dr. Wilson has demonstrated experience in the areas of aligning institutional goals with programmatic objectives, communicating with essential stakeholders to launch new initiatives, implementing policies and procedures related to new programs, fiscal accountability, faculty and staff professional development, utilizing data to substantiate program outcomes and impact and to guide decision-making. All right, let's jump right in, Dr. Wilson. Let's talk about integrity practices as it relates to um, a college's capacity to serve all students. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, integrity is essential to all aspects of the college's operations um, and improving the student's experience. Um, expanding the college's capacity to serve all, serve all students just means that we need to remember to build and reinforce educational partnerships with our students. It's crucial um, that we all understand as practitioners that we are our students' partners um, in higher education. Um, and that means, and there's a certain level of responsibility um, and accountability that we must take for their success. And so to me, I think that that speaks to integrity um, along with some other aspects. Um, again, there's breaking silos and, and striving to collaborate um, and demonstrate unity um, in order to um, optimize institutional operations. Again, that happens across the entire college. And that only can happen um, if we break down those walls, break down those silos, and that we see ourselves as partners um, with our students, partners internally, but partners externally with our students and our community. We have to remember also that we're building community. We're, we're supporting um, economically all our local communities. We, we are preparing our students to go out and there's a certain level of, of integrity um, that goes along with that as well. It's reciprocal, um, both internal and external. Okay, tell us some more about these partnerships. What do they look like? Give us an example. Sure, um, for me, um, an example for me is don't even in the enrollment process, um, and, and if you're introducing um, um, integrity in terms of enrollment management, that means being honest and upfront about the services and the resources are what we're able to provide to our students. Again, there's a return on investment. There's a return on education. And I think that that partnership starts at the very beginning with, again, representing our institutions, um, what level of, of academic quality they can expect to receive. So to me, that's setting expectations, just as in any good relationship. Again, you want to start those off with good foundation and a good foundation, um, again, um, is integrity even in from the enrollment process through the entire life cycle of a student, through those persistence pieces, making students aware and connecting them with our resources, all the way up to commencement. 
um, again, I think that there's opportunities to demonstrate um, integrity. Let's talk about the life cycle of a student a little bit more. Let's go into detail there because I think our audience um, may not know what that cycle entails. Absolutely. Let me share a little bit. Um, again, I mentioned um, enrollment management. Again, enrollment management means the recruitment phase, the registration phase. Advising is crucial. Again, I think sometimes there's there's a deficiency there. Uh, not to point any fingers, sure. um, there's a tendency um, with both on the academic and student affairs side to point fingers in academic advising. Oh, we've not advised the student properly. Oh, well, what happened in the advising you know, session that the student ended up in my particular course? But again, again, there's an opportunity to demonstrate and illustrate what integrity looks like, and that's advising. And you have to listen to and take into account a student's needs, um, and how we can best serve those needs. And sometimes that means they end up in, in courses, maybe that they've had to repeat classes. But again, I think that that comes in relationship with listening, um, active listening, and then placing those students as, as needed. Um, and sometimes that requires us to really take a step back and, and look at that, again, life cycle of a student and say, yes, it might look like they're taking a step back, but in, in fact, they're taking a step forward um, in saying, I'm self-aware, I understand what I need, I've come to this institution, so and I trust you are going to help me navigate um, you know, the institution in a way um, that demonstrates integrity, if that makes any sense. Um, and then there's persistence. It's actually matriculating. Um, it's actually, again, showing grit. And how do we help students to do that? What do we do? Are we honestly, and again, if I'm holding myself and my colleagues to a certain ethical standard, am I doing all that I can do to help my student meet their stu student learning outcomes? Have I done everything? Because you have to look at the diversity in the room. And if we say that we're serving students from a, a diversity and inclusion, um, equity and inclusion, what does that mean to us? What does that mean to me in the classroom? When I know that we have students in, in the room, if I have a class of 30, what does that mean that I meet the needs of all 30 students? They all have very lived, different lived experiences, um, different backgrounds. Um, they come from different educational systems, but they've all found their way in my room. And how do I practice cultural competency? How do I understand, um, help students to contextualize my course content in the way that serves all of their needs? Um, again, those are just a few examples um, of what I mean by um, integral practices. Good examples. Do you have a wide uh, background or a varied background with adult learners and andragogy? Can you speak to us a little bit about how specifically with that group of learners, integrity is important? Absolutely. Adults are self-directed. Again, it's not like pedagogy. It's not as if, you know, th there's a requirement um, for students, uh, you know, a, a strategic plan already set in place. For, for adult learners, um, we find our way back to the classroom because we need to upskill, reskill. Um, even as professionals, I believe we have a responsibility to do that as well. Um, we have a lifelong obligation to improve knowledge and competency. Um, and so do our adult learners. And so I think being much more self-aware, being self-actualized, they find themselves and they want to find real meaning um, in their classroom time. And that means, um, again, as a faculty and also I teach, I have to remember that I'm in a room full of adults and I have to manage that classroom from the perspective of, they also have professional experience and they want to share some of those experiences. It's my job to share in that learning with them, 
to refine maybe some of what their thoughts are. But I also know that I am preparing them for a global society, a global workplace. And that again, I have to make sure that I'm prepared um, and that I've also upskilled and reskilled and that my, they're my partners. It, it is not that I am leading the entire conversation or responsible for all of their learning. We're, it's a shared learning experience. And I want to make that a very rich, the classroom should be a very, very rich learning experience for our students. And that just means we have to embrace the fact that they're adults and that they come with their own experiences and that we need to help them to navigate and meet in the middle somewhere between here's the here's what your knowledge is, here's where we need to get to for your student learning outcomes, and how do we meet in the middle to make that meaningful for them? You talk about being self-aware. What are some ways that we can become more self-aware as administrators and instructors? Um, as an instructor, it is how am I delivering my content? Am I using universal design? Am I taking into consideration that people, you know, I am not oblivious um, or, or ignorant to the fact that people come from different backgrounds. There are different disparities um, in certain areas. Um, culturally, students approach learning very differently. You know, what am I doing and how am I delivering that content? Am I speaking to all of the learning styles? And I'm very careful to do that. Um, I recognize and realize that people learn differently and at different pace. And what am I doing to check in um, regularly with my students to make sure? It, now it's even um, technology. I know that some students have difficulty, you know, navigating technology. I know when I'm teaching my online or my my hybrid courses, it is that I am very careful to use the analysis um, in either, you know, whatever platform that I'm using. My, I have my preference. I'm not going to say what that is, <laughs> but certainly I have my preferences. But I will use the statistical analysis to, lo to look at that information to determine whether or not my students are technologically capable of completing and doing well in the course and creating opportunities to provide resources so I, I think that there are many, many ways that, again, I, as an instructor, as an educator, as a practitioner, can become self much more self-aware um, of how I'm delivering content. Awesome. Let's talk a little bit about uh, enhancing academic quality. Absolutely. Um, I just believe that I am responsible to maintain my commitment to educate and serve our, my students. Again, I feel like this is the work that I'm passionate and purpose to do. But in that commitment, again, it is making sure I am very careful to consider who's in the room and how am I reaching them. Um, I have an obligation um, to reskill, upskill, um, to prepare our students for a global society, a global workplace. Not only are they now just competing locally, they're competing globally. And so we're preparing our students for a 21st century workplace. And I believe that all of those things um, enhance academic quality. Um, if I see those things in myself, I also support and see those things in my colleagues and support their initiatives and the work that they're doing. Um, I think that that is really important as well. Um, even at saying, I'm holding myself accountable, but I'm an accountability partner to my colleagues. We are talking with Dr. Patrice Wilson, and we are discussing institutional operations and integrity practices. Dr. Wilson, what are your final thoughts? What would you like to leave with us today? I guess my, my final thoughts would be, um, I hope I've given you lots of nuggets, yes. but for me, you cannot deliver what you have not developed. And so for me, it is best practices and best practices starts with integrity. Um, and so that that is what I would leave leave uh, the audience with. Um, ag again, in, in ensuring that we're all developing um, the capacity and the ability to recognize in ourselves um, 
that we have integral practices and hold others accountable to the same. Thank you, Dr. Patrice Wilson. Thank you.